Welcome to Invest, talk about investing, finance, and professional woman. Uh, so, quarter time of 9.29 a.m. on the Eastern Time on November 9th on Wednesday. Hope you guys have a good hump day so far and also had a good week so far. If them $1,199, that's about 10.03% uh, so far. On the overall crypto market, you can see that on the left side of the chart, we are bright red at the moment across the spectrum. The worst that you see on the left side would be Solana, currently down about 25% so far at $18 right now. It seems like there's a huge liquidation event that happened. Um, and you could see that clearly we had this death cross. So this is um, quite foreseeable as we were quite extended for quite some time. On the weekly front, you could see that we're still in need of a cross section downward. Obviously, there's a delay because of the weekly perspective, but it still needs to happen until we have the recuperation and then resuscitate to re continue from there. And then also obviously on the overall crypto market is still bright red being led by Bitcoin, Ethereum. And what's going on, right? Uh, obviously, it's with respect to the recent news uh, that happened exactly yesterday where the shocking uh, world event, if you may. Uh, seems like FTX is being bought or acquired by Binance. And so, you know, Binance is a Chinese company. Uh, so with the geopolitical dynamics, um, a major crypto exchange platform is going to be controlled by a Chinese entity. So uh, obviously people are going to have some hesitation um, liquidating their crypto across the spectrum and driving this uh, fear mongering sell off, uh, but also with respect to you know, negative experience from the past, right? A lot of funds being blown up because of liquidation events. Um, so now with this um, shift, despite it doesn't really affect the uh, US operation, but crypto doesn't just affect the US. It's just a global, you know, phenomenon that we've been experiencing so far. So a lot of fear, a lot of um, lack of understanding with respect to control. Um, seems like the control is more gonna be Chinese prominent now. And with the do with this like Chinese dominance or prominence, depending on how you want to think about it, um, it's uh, it can optically raise some red flags for investors that have been investing into crypto. Uh, and next thing you know, a lot of funds get wiped out. A lot of people get wiped out. And you know, we saw yesterday at one point we were down seventeen percent for Ethereum at the worst point. Bitcoin was also down close to eleven percent at one point, and then we've subsequently reverse back up but it seems like the uh, chaotic uh, momentum is still progressing uh, we're seeing further sell-off at the moment um, and with respect to the catalyst that we want to count them chronologically at the moment right now would be one would be uh, the election it seems like based on what we see so far the futures which has some correlations to the crypto side is uncertain because um of the uh, bifurcation between uh, Democratic or Republican side, it seems like selective um, states are a little bit more Republican, but like it's quite a, a tight type of a race right now. We're, we're not that clear on that front. And also we're getting dampened uh, by uh, Meta laying off more than 11,000 employees. Wow, 11,000 employees around the Thanksgiving time period. I understand that Susan Lee just became the CFO um, and also Mark Zuckerberg under his administration with uh, Sheryl Sandberg just like, I don't know, moving on to do her own thing. Um, it's been quite disgusting uh, and how, quite um, demoralizing to see how the company has been performing so far. And uh, I don't even know, this picture looks kind of ridiculous, right? It seems like... Uh, I don't know if you like can see the picture. It's like why is he like in this like smirk? Um, maybe that's just me being stupid. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, yeah, it just makes him look kind of dumb in a way that CNBC's kind of put. Maybe that's just me being sensitive. On, on you know the picture that he's he's smiling, right? Um, what does that mean <laughs> exactly? Um. And then uh, with respect to the upcoming CPI report that's coming out tomorrow, so look at the calendar that's on November 10th, which is tomorrow, if you look at the date, 8.30 a.m. on the Eastern Time. So we'll be coming back to report. Uh, and then look at some of the buying and selling activities that we've been seeing across the spectrum. You can see that clearly BlackRock has sold quite a ton. There was definitely a heavy sell day, um, $7 billion, $6 billion. 
5 billion, 4 billion, respectively, on all of these stocks. And these stocks, we could see that they're mostly in tech, right? Intuit, Adobe, ServiceNow, Microsoft, blah, 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 blah. They did buy a little bit, but obviously, you could see yesterday was obviously a mega sell day. And then with respect to ARK Invest as well, let's see how Kathy is thinking about yesterday. It seems like they um, also sold, but they also bought. Uh, it seems like... <clears throat> BlackRock has a different perspective than ARK Invest. Uh, obviously, they're a different style trader, but um, you could see clearly that ARK Invest did sell, but more of a buy day yesterday, right? They did buy um, $24 million of Coinbase, I guess. Yeah, I guess they tried to buy the dip, right? Um, so with the yesterday's FTX uh, Binance incident, I wouldn't be surprised that they did. So now let's just go back to the technical now with respect to recording time of 9.35 a.m. on the Eastern time. On the monthly, again, flat, uh, looking to consolidate. Weekly, still need to cross down, unfortunately, guys. Uh, we just, we will see lower levels. Um, we are trying to resuscitate because uh, 1250 is the level, but you could see clearly we're below 1250. <clears throat> so that means more pain might be coming, right? You could see that liquidation liquidation and now we are kind of gliding away below this resistance level so next level of support is going to be somewhere around 1050 and as you get to 1050 you are going to go down to um 750 as the next level of support right and then on a weekly you can see that we still need to kind of cross down and then cross up still have this three peaks i don't quite like it you know, so um, prepare for yourself again, right? 1050, 750. Um, seeing three digit levels like we saw back in the day would not be a surprise knowing the fact that, you know, the regulatory concern is still up there. And obviously with the CPI report, PPI report, um, it's still happening this week. So stay prepared. But I do think that after all of this, we should get some relief rally um, ahead of Thanksgiving. So yeah, um, we. I also hope that we have a good Veterans Day, which is on Friday. And then on Bitcoin, we are exactly at the resistance level at 17,500, like I talked about yesterday. This is not a, you know, I'm not a wizard, but I'm just talking technical analysis. You can see that we had the flash crash, crash all the way down to that level that we wanted to support. We also had a support uh, bar that tells you that we continue on. So it seems like we are just like going down further and further and further and further, going back dated all the way back to a long time ago, um, two years ago, December 11, 2022. So the next level down is going to be where? You could see it, right? 16. And then, but the real level is going to be somewhere around like 15,500. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, but right now it's looking quite uh, oversold, right? Because you see that like this is clearly a liquidation event happened globally on the weekly perspective. We still need to cross down. So I think 15,500 is very logical. If we get to 15,500, I think five, uh, 750 for Ethereum is very logical. And then with respect to monthly, um, it is looking to kind of consolidate and glide up from here. On the stock side of the equation, you can see that Tesla is below $200. Uh, cross down and then cross up. So this seems like, um, you know, obviously we had the death cross, but now it seems like, seems like we're recuperating already. The market's open, so it seems like it's definitely trying to recuperate right now. Meta is up 6.53% because of the alleviation of firing 11,000 people. Bananas. And all the Chinese stocks are obviously getting killed. Uh, Neo's at $10 at the moment right now. Uh, very suppressed, I would say, across the spectrum. Daily, weekly, monthly... Uh, is looking to rebound, but like obviously we need to wait out um, all the Chinese regulatory news. Palantir is also down 2%. Uh, it's being quite suppressed. Low volume across the spectrum. Weekly looking to cross down and cross up. Daily is very extended and also very, very elongated downward. So it is looking to rebound as we get the confirmatory signal. And then um, look at Coinbase. Whoa, Coinbase is at 48 bucks now. Um, at one point, we were at 46.25. Daily crazy oversold. Weekly, very extended still. Um, not looking good. I think Coinbase might actually go belly flopped because of the just 
how much has sold off so far. You could see, just think about this. If you bought in on IPO, 429, we're $48 now. Wow. That's a 10, negative 10x, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, anyways. Okay, so have a good day, guys. I uh, hope you guys do find this analysis to be helpful. I do have uh, a lot of meetings today, um, so I actually have to head out. But uh, let me know if you have any questions. Like, subscribe to our Patreon. People know this already, uh, the ones that actually follow uh, our analysis. And I find I think you guys will find it helpful. You can also reach me with like direct messages and stuff like that. Um, but I appreciate you for joining me again. Uh, it's been a volatile time, but let's stay on together and let's hold still. Appreciate you guys, and I'll check you on the next one. Take care.